Uh, good afternoon, all, um, and welcome. I will take the mask off. We're practicing social distance. We are in our CERC, or, or our Corporate Emergency uh, Response Center, and um, we pulled together various parts of the company into one room to manage big events such as this outage restoration. It really allows uh, various groups and all groups within the company to work together um, uh, to communicate, to organize under the incident command system so that we can do the support needed to allow our folks to uh, do the restoration efforts in the field. Um, what I'll do today is I'll update you on uh, the status of the storm restoration. Uh, we continue to make progress uh, following the storm that hit the area on Tuesday afternoon, and I'll provide the figures uh, for some of that uh, later, and we'll also provide time uh, for some Q&A. But before I get into all of that, um, for those customers that remain without power, I really need to let you know that uh, we recognize um, it's a tremendous hardship. And it's incredibly frustrating to go any period of time with ele without electricity, certainly uh, for several days. Um, and please do know that we are doing everything we can to expedite restoration as safely and efficiently and effectively as possible. Um, just to recap, a total of 300,000 customers were impacted during this storm. That is the second biggest storm since Hurricane Sandy. So Superstorm Sandy was the biggest. This is number two uh, in the books for us uh, and, and, and for our customers. 180,000 customers uh, interrupted in New York City and 120,000 in Westchester. Uh, this was really a wind and tree damage storm and it is uh, as significant as I have seen in my 33 years uh, in the company. Much of the work involves infrastructure rebuild rather than repair. We're literally, in some cases, after trees have come down, uh, placing multi replacing multiple poles, transformers, wire, really putting in new infrastructure rather than uh, repairing old, given the extent of the damage. So, so far of those 300,000 customers, we've restored 193,000 since Tuesday afternoon when that storm uh, left the area. Uh, in New York City, about 49,000 customers remain without service, and in Westchester County, about 58,000. Um, and we are working tirelessly around the clock to expedite those repairs. We have more than 2,700 people in the field. These are line crews, tree trimmers, uh, damage assessors, um, site safety representatives, all working in unison uh, to bring these numbers in. We expect a thousand more overhead line crews to arrive into the territory tomorrow to help speed up the effort and uh, affect those restorations. As I said, this is the CERC and the whole company is focused on the restoration. So be it lodging for the mutual aid crews, logistics, dry ice, uh, communications with customers. We all come together with the singular focus of uh, serving our customers and getting the lights back on. We expect the vast majority of customers to, res to be restored by Sunday night and some of the most arduous restorations. If you can think about a lot of damage impacting several customers or single customers, that'll go into early next week, but the vast majority of customers will be restored uh, by Sunday evening. Um, Lost my spot. I got it. Um, in terms of communications, we're, we're, um, we're working hard to keep our customers informed. We're updating estimated times of restoration for customers. So uh, individuals can go on to our outage map on the website, coned.com, and check the status, where they are in the queue of the restorations. Um, and we continue to provide um, uh, additional communications as we progress toward that ultimate restoration. So uh, good to check the outage map, and you can see the latest. We're distributing dry ice to customers, uh, Westchester, Queens, Staten Island, and the Bronx. If you go to coned.com, you can find the specific locations. At those locations, we'll have a van there with Con Edison reps who can help um, provide additional information about the restoration and other issues. Um, to the media, to you folks, um, thanks for keeping the public informed. We've issued over 15 press releases. I will continue to do that. And these briefings, we've, uh, we started them on Tuesday. It really does provide a good opportunity um, for us to allow you to keep the customer, customers informed. And we think that's uh, really important. Um, so with that, I will uh, open it up to any questions. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, just looking to see if you wanna raise your hand. Uh, go to the participant uh, button and state your name and your news organization and um, we'll give everybody a minute to, uh, we don't have any questions. We have Chris, Chris Eberhardt 
Um, Chris, go ahead. Hey, Mr. Coley, how are you? Um, I just wanted to see if you wanted, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, politicians uh, criticizing the company. Um, can you just respond to some of the ones that you've heard of, uh, you know, and you know, anything that you want to say back to them? Yeah, to, to, be, to be honest, I am uh, consumed and singularly focused on this restoration effort. Um, so it is, not, it is a big effort. We're here to serve our customers. So at this point in time, I am uh, all eyes on ensuring that we can do our best to get these customers back in lights safely and quickly. Okay, thank you. Let's go to James Ford of the WPIX 11. James, I'm sorry, you're on mute. Hang on, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Go ahead. There we go. Uh, you hear me now? I can hear you. Good Great. afternoon. Well, thank you, and good afternoon to you. Thank you for taking my question. Can you uh, talk about the large-scale blackout uh, in Manhattan today? What do we know about uh, its origin, and what do you say to the customers there, sir? Yeah, and thanks for your question. I um, intended to cover it. So this morning at about 5.15, you know, just after 5 a.m., um, a, trans a transmission disturbance on the transmission system resulted in three networks in Manhattan uh, losing power. Um, this was on the Upper West Side, Harlem, and the Upper East Side. Affected about 187,000 customers. Fairly short-lived. The uh, Restoration occurred in about 30 minutes. Um, we continue to investigate um, the precise cause of that tr transmission disturbance uh, and we'll take uh, any corrective actions we need. But we're able to um, uh, quickly uh, restore power, uh, went out around 5.15 and back by 5.45. And we continue to look at the cause. Uh, thank you, James Ford. We're gonna go to Gerson Fritis Jr. Gerson. Oh, hold on, we don't have you, we lost you. Bear with me, um, looking for him. We had him, we had him and, and now we lost him. I, I don't know where he went. Okay, uh, any other questions for Con Ed President Tim Cawley? Okay, um, hearing none, Hello. we will. Hello. Yes, Gerson. Hi, I'm here, sorry I wasn't mute. Um, I'd like you to uh, give me an update on the number of outside mm -hmm. workers that uh, are helping in the restoration. You said another thousand workers are coming tomorrow, right? That's uh, on top of the 1,100 that had already been announced? It, that's correct. So we've got our internal staff working. We've got about 1,100, not, subject to check on these numbers, but 1,100. And then another thousand will arrive out to the property tomorrow. Okay, and, and, and a second, second question, uh, in the very beginning, wasn't it possible to source more crews from the Western states that were not affected by the storm? Because every utility involved in this process is talking about how they are competing for these mutual aid crews. Uh, and I'm uh, wondering why more crews from the western uh, part of the country wasn't uh, weren't made available. Yeah, so a couple of thoughts. Before the storm came up, and obviously the storm came up from Florida, we were tracking it a week and a half ago, we were preparing. We had brought in 500 line workers uh, poised to respond to whatever damage the anticipated weather uh, would, would bring. The weather as it occurred was uh, much more severe. 70 mile an hour winds. So, so we have reached out, we flew some crews in and they do sharing buckets. We work uh, around the clock. So um, we, we have flown crews in uh, um, from various parts of the United States uh, and crews are, are, are also coming in. Um, it takes a while to get, to drive crews in uh, from the West and you need a, uh, trucks to allow them to affect repairs. So um, we've been able to, you know, we're, we're just about three days ago is when the storm was just pushing north. Um, we were able to acquire a number of crews. And again, um, we'll be able to supplement that greatly with the influx of crews tomorrow. And we're going to go back to James Ford of PIX11. James, are you there? Yes, I am here. And uh, just, a, just a brief follow up. Uh, the same time as the Manhattan blackout, there was a blackout in a middle village, Queens area. Uh, can you respond to that and to 
uh, the mayor's statements just saying that Con Ed be more forthcoming on how quickly repairs will be done system wide. Yes, so on the outage in Middle Village, uh, that was, we had some weather this morning, it rained uh, quite a bit, and that was really more of, it was not storm related, it was more of a typical outage that might occur on a distribution system serving 3.5 million customers. So our crews have gone out and repaired that, but it was an overhead uh, section, um, likely weather related, but not storm related. Um, uh, occasionally, um, uh, the power goes out and we uh, send crews to respond, and that's effectively what happened this morning. Coincidental, but completely unrelated and not related to, uh, to the storm that rolled through on Tuesday afternoon. Okay, Tim, we're going to go to Lu Llewellyn King. Llewellyn King, could you tell us uh, your news organization, please? Yes, I'm the producer of White House Chronicle on PBS, and I write for Forbes. Uh, okay, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious to know what we learn from these outages. Are we going to see ways of hardening the system going forward? We hear a lot of talk about resilience and how electricity is becoming in every aspect of life more important, and it will more and more when we get to the smart city, city of the future, where electricity 24-7 is going to be absolutely vital if it goes off in a severe storm, and we're likely to see more because of global warming, uh, that, that's an impediment to future development. How are we going to be able to harden the storm and what is Con Ed doing, uh, the system, and how is Con Ed working towards that? Yes, yeah, so, so really great question, um, and agree wholeheartedly, um, the service we provide uh, electricity is becoming more and more um, important in, in people's everyday lives. Um, we've done a number of things to harden the system and to look at uh, climate impact as it might impact the system in the future. Um, and we do learn after every event. A big part of our process and uh, a company um, uh, theme is continuous improvement. So when we're done with this storm, we will get the groups together and understand uh, what went well and what didn't go well or what could have gone better and uh, look to improve. Continuous improvement is part of uh, who we are. In terms of storm hardening and resiliency, we have focused extensively on hardening and resiliency. Um, we spent, following Superstorm Sandy, a billion dollars, much of it on flood resiliency. Um, more recently, in our Westchester region, which is largely an overhead distribution system, we're spending $25 million a year exclusively on hardening our overhead system. And what do I mean by that? Um, things like uh, additional smart switches that uh, allow for isolation of problems and lessening the impact when problems do occur. So for example, in a traditional overhead system, a tree comes down, you might lose a thousand customers, might lose service. With smart switches, you could reduce that to 500 or 250. So the same tree falls, same event, less impact. Um, we're also uh, using uh, different materials, uh, aerial cables that are more resilient to weather and tree damage, um, uh, different trimming specs. Uh, so, so lots of things, $25 million a year, uh, strictly dedicated toward hardening the overhead system. And we've been doing it for a few years. And when we do a VAT cast on outages, both blue sky, gray sky, sort of the okay weather, and storms like this, we back cast and said, had we not done this hardening, had we not installed these smart switches, what would the interruption numbers look like? And we're seeing about a 20% decrease already based on the efforts we've made. And we've got more to do. We continue to con we plan to continue to invest uh, that level in these uh, re resilience gaps. Okay, we're gonna have one more question. Let's go back to Gerson Freitas. Gerson, I think you're with the Journal News, right? Yes, Bloomberg Ger News. Yep, oh, Bloomberg, sorry. Yes, Bloomberg News. Uh, now, just uh, confirm to have an estimate of um, how many customers will remain without power by Monday morning. So, so uh, we continue to work through that process and assess as, as we as we work the outages down again Tuesday afternoon we jumped right into this we're uh, into Friday afternoon so we work the outages where we can restore the most customers for the least effort uh, if you picked a wire up or several wires up and restored a hundred customers we'll do those jobs before we do one where there's several trees and it serves one customer 
as we, so the numbers will come down significantly and it really depends on um, precisely what the damage is at each location. Um, but I would expect um, a number of customers will certainly go into Monday. The numbers will decrease significantly, but uh, these will be smaller jobs involving lots of labor to restore, uh, uh, you know, a dozen or less. Tim, before we go, any closing thoughts, any final uh, words that you have for us before we wrap this up? Uh, yeah, thanks. So, so thank you uh, for your attention and, and your uh, insightful questions. Thank the workers, frankly. Uh, the folks in the field are doing um, a really uh, commendable job around the clock uh, working uh, to get uh, power restored and are resolute in that effort. Um, and to our customers, we, we get it. Um, we understand that it is incredible hardship to without power um, for any time, let alone for a few days. And please know we are working earnestly to do our best to get you restored uh, safely and quickly. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you very much, Tim Cawley, and thanks everybody for joining us. Um, have a good afternoon.